Good morning, today's lesson is 4.4. Problem solving. Use tables to compare ratios. Our essential question, how can you use the strategy, find a pattern to compare ratios? Let's unlock the problem. A paint store makes rose pink paint by mixing three parts red paint to eight parts white paint. A clerk mixes four parts red paint to seven parts white paint. Did the clerk mix the paint correctly to make the rose pink paint? Use the table equivalent ratios to support your answer. Use the graphic organizer to help you solve the problem. This is very similar to what we did yesterday. So what do I need to find? I need to find whether the ratio is used, ratio used by the clerk is equivalent, right, to the ratio for the rose pink paint. We talked about yesterday how those were equivalent fractions, right? Essentially is what we were doing when we were doing our ratios. What information do I need to use? Well, I need to use the rose pink paint ratio and the ratio used by the clerk. How will I use this information? Well, I'm going to make a table of the equivalent ratios to compare the ratios. So first, I'm comparing the 3 to the 8 and the 4 to the 7, right? Here's my 3 parts to the 8 and my 4 parts to the 7. So yesterday we had our chart out and we were relating these to equivalent fractions and we had our charts on the, the wall. So if we have three parts red and eight parts white, essentially we were kind of doing a multiplication chart, right? So if we had a three to eight ratio, then we're gonna have a six to 16. And the reason that would be is because this is three times two is six and whatever I do to the top of my equivalent ratio, remember I do to the bottom. So this is eight times two, which is here. Now in this one, three times what is nine? Well, it's three. So if I take eight and I multiply it by three, then I should get, sorry, I should get 24. Again, I'm gonna look at my example here. So now I have 12. In order to get the 12, I multiply the three by four. Whatever I do to the top, I do the bottom, right? So that's four times eight which is going to be 32. So we're just looking at them. And if you think about it with my multiplication charts like yesterday, multiples of 3 is 3, 6, 9, 12. And then in my parts of white, it's 8, 16, 24, 32. It's essentially my multiplication chart, right? So let's keep this going. So now I'm doing, now I'm kind of doing it in reverse, right? Because I have the bottom. So I have 7, 14, 21, 28. 7 times 1 is 7, 7 times 2 is 14, 7 times 3 is 21, 7 times 28 is, or 7 times 4 is 28. So 4 times 1 is 4, and I'm going to go by 2, and I'm going to get 8, and times 3 it's 12, and times 4 it's 16. So I'm, gonna, I'm looking for the pattern, right? So that was the pattern to determine. So 12 32s, right? So here I am with my 12 and my 32s, 12 32s is not equivalent to 12 21s, right? I, I can't do 12 21s and 12 32s. They're, they're not the same, right? So the ratios have the same numerator, but they have different denominators. So the clerk did not mix the paint correctly, just like the Kool-Aid that we made yesterday. If we mixed more sugar or less sugar, it was going to taste very differently. It would taste better or worse, right? if we did the ratio incorrectly. Let's try another problem. In Amy's art class, the ratio of brushes to students is six to four. In Tracy's art class, the ratio of brushes to students is nine to six. In the ratio of brushes to students in Amy's class equivalent to the ratio of brushes and students in Tracy's class, use the table of equivalent ratios to support your answer. So we're trying to see if those ratios are equivalent. Are six to four equivalent to nine to six? So what do I need to find out? Well, I need to find out whether the ratios of brushes to students in Amy's class is equivalent to the ratio in Tracy's class. What information do I need to use? Well, I need to use the ratio of brushes to students in each class, so 6 to 4 and 9 to 6. How will I use that information? Well, I'm going to make equivalent table ratios to compare 6 to 4 and 9 to 6. Okay, so let's make our table. I kind of already have it pre-made here, but if I've got... Oh... There we go. So it, we had six to four, right? So if I'm doing this six times, we have six to four. 
Um, if, I do, if I multiply 6 times 2, I get 12. I multiply 4 times 2, I get 8. Then I multiply it by 3 and I get 18. I multiply the bottom by 3 and I get 12. Multiply the top by 4 and I get 24. Multiply the bottom by 4 and I get 16. So now let's do the other art class. The other art class, it's 9 to 6, right? So um, if I multiply 9 times 2, I get 18. 6 times 2, I get 12. This side's going to be times 3, I get 27. Times 3, I get 18, right? 9 times um, 4 is 36. And 6 times... Um, 4 is 24, right? So, 18 twelves is equivalent to 18 twelves, which means that the ratio in the first table are equivalent to the ratio in the second table. Because here's my 18 twelves, and I have 18 twelves. So, 18 twelves is equivalent to 9 sixths. So, 18 twelves is also equivalent to 6 fourths. So, the ratio of brushes to students in Amy's class is equivalent to the ratio of brushes of students in Tracy's class. Use the patterns. Explain how you use the pattern to determine whether the ratios in the two tables are equivalent. Well, simply, I saw that both tables included 18 twelfths, and since the same ratio appears in both tables, the ratio in the first table must be equivalent to the ratio in the second table. Tell how the writing, tell how writing the ratios in simple form can help you justify your answer. Well, when you write the ratios in simple form, you'll find that they are equivalent. Six fourths does is equivalent to three halves, and 9 6 is equivalent to um, 3 halves. So just like when you're simplifying fractions, it's basically kind of, it's a, definitely something that you pointed out yesterday, and I thought it was um, a strong thing to see, that these are equivalent fractions, but it's also like simplifying. So not only can we multiply across, like we did here, we multiplied across, but if I go backwards, I'm dividing, right? Because 24, 16, I look to see, oh, they both have 2 in common. You know, and I can, I can divide going this way or I'm multiplying going this way because they do work in inverse with each other. If you need any help, I'm on the floor. Um, you can also work with a partner or in small groups. Good luck.